This is part 67 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what are cookies and why are they needed, how to write a cookie and read it later. First, let's understand why are cookies needed. Web applications work on HTTP protocol. HTTP is a stateless protocol. This means after the web server has processed the client request for a web page, the web server will not remember anything about the client that made the request. Let's understand what we mean by this statement with an example. Let's design a web page with a drop-down list and we want this drop-down list to display three colors, red, green and blue. Once we select a color from the drop-down list, we want to set that selected color as the background color for our web page. For example, if we select red from the drop-down list, then we want to set that red color as the background color for our web page and on a subsequent visit to the same page, it should display the page with the background color that we previously selected. So it should remember our color preference. Let's see if that's going to be the behavior. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here we have a select element with four options. The first option is select color and then we have those three colors, red, green and blue. So when we run this page, we should get a drop-down list with those four options. So the first option is select color and then we have those three colors. Now whenever the selection within the drop-down list changes, so if I select one of these three colors, then we want to set that selected color as the background color for this web page. So let's write a JavaScript function for that and let's name that set color. And within this function, let's create a variable. Let's name this selected color. So we are going to retrieve the color that the user has selected from this drop-down list, DDL theme. So basically, this variable now will contain the selection that the user has made in from the drop-down list. So if selected color is not equal to select color, then that means the user has selected one of these three colors. In that case, we want to set the BG color attribute of the document object to the color that the user has selected from the drop-down list. And then we want to call this function whenever the selection within the drop-down list changes. So on change, call set color function. Let's save these changes, reload the page, and look at this. When we select green, the background color is changed to green. So that's our color preference. When we make a subsequent visit, we want the browser to remember our color preference. So let's open a new tab, make another request to the page, and look at that. It does not remember our color preference. Why is that? That's because Web applications work on HTTP protocol and HTTP is a stateless protocol. This means after the web server has processed the initial request, it does not remember anything about the settings the client made. There are several ways to make a web application remember these settings. One of the easiest and common ways is by using cookies. So what are cookies? Cookies are small text files that a browser stores in the visitor's computer. A cookie is basically a string of name value pairs separated by semicolons. And this is how a typical cookie looks like. So within this cookie, we've got two name value pairs. The first name value pair is color equals red, and the second name value pair is expires equals some date and time in UTC. And notice these two name value pairs are separated by a semicolon. Basically, this expires attribute specifies when the cookie is going to expire. By default, cookies are deleted when the current browser session ends. If you want to store the cookie on the client computer, even after the browser session has ended, then specify either expires or max age attributes. We'll discuss the difference between these two attributes in our next video. For now, understand that to create a persistent cookie, you have to use one of those two attributes, expires or max age. And we have set color attribute in this case. To red. Now to write a cookie to the client computer, we use the cookie property of the document object. So this line right here is going to write this cookie to the client computer. And to read a cookie, we use again the same property, 
cookie property of the document object. So in this case, the cookie will be loaded into this variable. So let's look at an example of how to read, uh, write and read a cookie. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's change the name of this function to set color cookie. And let's change the name here as well. So now to write the cookie to the client computer, we use the cookie property of the document object. And within the cookie, we want to store um, the color preference. So I'm going to name it color. You can give it any meaningful name you want. Color equals whatever color the user has selected from the drop-down list. And we have that value within this variable, selected color. And then, so for example, if we select red from the drop-down list, color equals red. And then that name value pair should be separated by a semicolon. And then we specify the expires attribute. Keep in mind, expires attribute is optional. Um, if you don't specify expires attribute, then the cookie will be deleted right away after you close the browser. But if you want to create a persistent cookie, then you will have to use one of those two attributes, expires or maxage. Let's use expires attribute. And let's set this to Friday 5th August 2016 and the cookie is going to expire at 1 a.m. 1 hour 0 minutes 0 seconds and the date and time is to go uh, is going to be in UTC format. So basically we are going to store this cookie on the client computer now. So now the cookie contains the user's color preference. Now when we make a subsequent visit, we want to read the color preference from that cookie and then set that color as the background color for the web page. So, vendor.onload equals, we want to execute an anonymous function and this function is going to read the cookie. So document.cookie is going to return the cookie, but remember cookies have expiry. So when cookies expire and if the cookie is not present, then this cookie property is going to return an empty string. So if document.cookie dot length not equal to zero, then we know that the cookie is present. And in that case, we want to retrieve the color value and then set that as the background color for our web page. So let's create a variable here. And let's name this name value array equals document dot cookie. So basically this cookie property is going to return you know color equals whatever color we have selected. Okay, for example if we select red, it's going to return us color equals red. From that name value pair we just want the value which is red. Okay, so within the string color equals red, you know, the separator is equal to. So we want to split the string based on that equal to symbol. So document.cookie.split, the separator is going to be equal to. So the split method is actually going to return us an array. And within that array, you know, there are going to be two items, two strings. So the first string is going to be this word color and the second string is going to be the actual color value. Okay, so once we have the array, then we are going to set BG color of the document to name value array of one. So give me the string that is present in array index position one. In zeroth position of the array, we have um, color and in the first position, we have the actual color value, which is red. And we also want to set the same item selected within the drop-down list. So document dot get element by ID. The ID of the drop-down list is DDL theme dot value equals name value array of one. All right. So let's throw in a breakpoint in both of these functions and let's run this in debug mode. At the moment, we don't have any cookies set. 
So when this piece of code is executed, look at this. When I hover the mouse over document.cookie, it does not return anything. It returns an empty string. Okay, so it's not going to go inside this if block because the length will will be equal to zero. So let's press F10 so it gets out of that function. Now let's go ahead and select a color. So let's select blue for example. So this function will be called set color cookie. So let's press F10. So our selected color is blue. And let's press F5. So now look at that. Blue is the color. Now let's actually reload this page. And now when I have the mouse over this cookie property, look at what it is returning. Color equals blue. So the cookie is returning that string, color equals blue. And on the next line, what are we doing? We're actually splitting the cookie uh, using the equal to symbol. So we are going to get back two strings. Okay, so this array is going to contain two strings. So name value pair. Look at that. Within the 0th position, it contains color. And within the first position, it contains the actual color value, which is blue. And then name value array of 1 is going to give us blue. And we are setting that as the background color. So when I press F5, look at that. The background color is blue. The drop-down list remembers the selection. So even after I close the browser and open a new browser instance and then when we navigate to the same page look at that it still remembers our color se selection and that's possible because we are storing that user preference in a cookie on the client computer so to store a cookie we use document.cookie and to read a cookie we use document.cookie and here's the same example that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.